Hi, Stephen from Owner Disso. Well, I'm excited to say that I've got the Legion 5 Pros with the uh, RTX 3060 in it and the uh, Ryzen 7 5000H. Yeah, I had to buy it on Ant Online. It cost me uh, about just under $1,500, including the tax. Uh, Mike, true, I wanted the 3070 model, but, you know, this was the only one available. Uh, so this is an unboxing, first look, followed by I'll do a live stream testing in, you know, several games and, and applications for you guys. And then I'll, of course, I'll do a review or so afterwards that. And I, I do plan to compare it against the Omen 15 with the Ryzen 5600H and the 3060 as well. Now, this has a, um, a 130 watt 3060. So that is very, very good indeed. Now, it comes very well protected. These big rubber, or big foam padding, I should say here. Of course, you get the power cable setup guide that type of stuff in the box so the power brick it's a 300 watt power brick so it's pretty big it's thin though but it is takes up a large area so it, of course it's a it's 130 watt uh, 3060 so it does take a bit of power and you get you get some stickers you don't want those do we it's a silver or grey model, I should say. Now, it does, is available in this uh, white, which I personally like the look of, and I would like to have that, but I've got to take what you can get. And you do have uh, their symbol here. Now, we do have some fairly decent air intakes as well, but we will go inside and take a look there. So the underside is actually metal, so that's very nice, and it's a very tight finish. It's a good build to get inside. In fact, I had to put a screwdriver inside one of the screw holes, pry it up, and create a bit of a gap. Now inside we have the 78 watt hour battery and either side the stereo speakers. We have the two RAM slots here, M.2 SSD, which is a 512 gigabyte in mine. And we have the uh, Wi-Fi 6 and we have a second uh, M.2 slot here. Nice big heat pipes, thicker than on the, the Legion 5 with a third one here. Uh, this is the 3060, the 5800H and we do have four heat sinks. It's very good with some nice big fans so the cooling does look good. So what is good, you do get the Legion Ultimate support, you know, free for, for the first year, which you can ex extend uh, up to an extra three years. So you do get 24-7 uh, phone or live chat support. Plus also, it looks like you also can get a technician to your house to fix your problems. The hinges are also very stiff. There's no creaking, and I think they seem to be pretty solidly built. Now I've configured it in the BIOS so that you can actually... Uh, Turn it on without pressing the power button, which is nice. We'll go through the BIOS in a little bit. Now, of course, it's a 16-inch uh, laptop. With a, uh, the screen has a 16 to 10 uh, aspect ratio, and it's you know it's, it's a it's a it's a beautiful screen. Definitely, it's a 500 nit panel, and it is is very nice. And I, I do like the extra real estate you get here vertically with the 16 to 10 aspect ratio. Resolution is 2560 by 1600. So here we have the Omen 15 on the left and the Legion 5 Pro on the right. And interestingly, I would say that the uh, Omen 15 does look brighter, although I would say the contrast looks better on the Legion 5 Pro. And the height difference is actually not that much difference, is it? So of course, it's a little bit bigger than a regular 15-inch laptop. But actually, I like the size because it splits between the 15-inch like here, the Omen 15, and the regular 17-inch, which is a lot bigger. So... You know, it does add a little bit extra girth here, say at the back, but not much. And uh, I do like the size. Now, the keyboard, you know, it, it's it's a typical uh, Legion keyboard. Very, it's very good. You do have a separate number pad. The only issue I have found is that the, the three key here, I would uh, press it. Uh, it registers, you press here in the, uh, in the center of it. Okay, but the, the corners on the left side, top and bottom, it doesn't register for me on the right side it's fine so i don't know if that's just something to do with my unit but that is a little bit off-putting so pressing the fn and q button changes the power modes here pressing uh, fn and r will actually switch the screen between 60 hertz and 165 hertz um, the build it's a plastic pretty chassis but does have a webcam here at the top so that's very nice so on the left we have a usb 3.2 gen 2 type c and um, with display port 1.4 and the headphone and mic combo jack 
And on the right, we have a USB uh, 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port and the E shutter button for, for the 720p webcam. And now we're over at the back there, we have three USB 3.2 Gen 1 uh, Type A ports. One of them is always on. And then we have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C, and which also uh, has a DisplayPort 1.4 and power delivery so you can power up your laptop using a 100 watt uh, USB-C charger. You also have the HDMI 2.1 which is great and RJ45 and the power in port. So at the back at the top here you do have the, the ports actually identified of what they are but they don't light up like the Legion 7 will do and of course you see that the emblem lights up here when it's powered on of course when you unplug it that goes off. So let's have a look and see how hot it gets. All right, so doing a combination of uh, ADA64 stress test with 100% CPU load and running heaven in the uh, in the background. You know, this is quite an unrealistic load because, you, you know, combining the GPU and the CPU, you, you know, you're not going to reach this. But um, 62 watts on the 5800H, and it uh, has been up to around about 91 degrees uh, uh, temperature. So it does get a little bit warm, but of course, this is a full load and it's holding you know, 4,000 megahertz, so that's pretty decent. The GPU on the other hand, you know, it's running cool, 50 degrees, because heaven doesn't really tax it too much, and it's only pulling, you know, 30 watts or so there. But all in all, I don't think that's too bad at all. So Cinebench R20, performance mode, about 87 degrees, and uh, it's pulling around about uh, 78 watts, so that's quite a lot of watts. And, uh, of course, there's no fan control here, um, but uh, let's see what we score on performance mode. This is multi-threaded, and here we get uh, 4,946 points. So in balance mode, it's running around about 3,600 megahertz. Temperature is about 70 degrees, so it's dropped down, of course, quite a lot. But of course, the power now is 54 watts, from down from 78 watts in performance mode. Um, so that's not bad. Let's see what type of score we get. We got 4,641. So that's still a pretty decent score. So in quiet mode, we're running around about 2,700 megahertz and uh, temperature 52 degrees and the power 25 watts. And the score 3,532. So in Cinebench R23, the multi-threaded score of 12,751 is actually 7% faster than the 4800H and some 17% faster than the i9-10980HK from Intel. And the single core massive boost, 10% faster than the 4800H and also the i9. Now Far Cry New Dawn is a good game to test the thermals. And as you can see there, it's uh, running about to 89 degrees on the 5800H. And this is using performance mode. And uh, the 3060 is about 73, 74 degrees. Now it is holding a decent power there, 116 watts on the 3060. So this is pretty decent. And of course, this is dedicated GPU mode. And in terms of the fan noise, uh, 46 decibels. That's pretty decent. And we're pretty close there to the computer. So the performance in Far Cry New Dawn, it didn't do as well as some of its competitors, I must say. Um, although it did do fairly well at the native 2560 by 1600 with 72 FPS. Other than that, at like 1080p, it certainly got beat by even the Gigabyte G5 with this 105 watt 3060. So here we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla 2560 by 1600. It's pulling, you know, about 100 watts or so. And we're getting a good frame rate, um, you know, even at this resolution in the 60s and the temperatures of course you know it's only the benchmark but that's 74 degrees the performance in assassin's creed valhalla where it's very gpu intensive is very good we're looking at its native resolution um, of 2560 by 1600 55 fps which is fantastic and then as we lower it down even to 1080p we got 73 fps uh overclocking that by 140 megahertz, which you can easily actually do also within the BIOS, which is very nice. I got 75 FPS. And to put that into context, the 30, 70, 125 watt in the GE66 got 77. Um, so it's very close to that. So here we have Cyberpunk 2077, 2560 by 1600, 
um, ray tracing ultra and DLSS set to balanced. And you know, we've got a lot of reflections going on here and we're still getting like 43 FPS. I think that is a fantastic performance holding about 123 watts, very nice. And temperatures, you know, in the low 80s. And this is on performance mode. So the Vantage software is actually pretty decent. Um, you do have, uh, of course, the thermal power mode here, which is, of course, by pressing uh, the uh, FN and the uh, Q button. You can switch that up to performance, say. That's what I'll do for my testing here. So interestingly, on balance mode, you do have the option to automatically detect the game that you're playing and tune the CPU and GPU performance. So that'll be interesting to see how that compares against Dynamic Boost 2.0. You've got hybrid mode now. You do that. You know, switch to a hybrid mode, you have to do a restart. Now, it doesn't start automatically. You have to do that yourself. Um, it has an overdrive option for the panel, so I've got that set up. And uh, you do have various options here for update, which is nice, and inbuilt uh, update software. You can do macro keys. Um, you can alter the, the, the power here, so if you want to do rapid charge, you have that. You conserve the battery between 55 and 60%. And Hamic sound software, so you have that. It is X right uh, calibrated, so it's good good color accuracy. I'll, I'll measure that, of course, in the review. So the lighting has options for you know have it off, or just general a couple of patterns here, you know, or you can actually then just go and customize yourself, and uh, you know, pick the color you want for the whole keyboard, or you can actually pick the different zones. And choose the color you want for these four different zones so that's what you got for the, for the key lighting now the legion 7 will have uh, a full rgb keyboard i imagine so what do i think of the legion 5 pro well i do like it it's got decent build quality it's a nice styling i do like the logo here at the on the lid as well plenty of ports plenty of usb ports and i like that you can power, power it by usb c performance wise it's top notch, isn't it? For a 3060, I don't think you're going to get much better. It's close to a 3070, 125 watt part, especially when you put that uh, overclock on the GPU. And I see the thermals are pretty decent as well. Fan noise is good. Uh, the speakers actually are fairly decent as well. So, and the screen, you know, it's to die for. You know, I do like that extra vertical real estate you get there. It's nice and sharp. It's a big win for me and it's nice and bright too it's 500 nits and of course i'll measure the, the full color accuracy when uh, i do my review but you know my next video is going to be a live stream where i'll be testing many different games and of course you can jump on ask questions and i'll be taking phone calls requests that type of thing so make sure you subscribe for that thank you for watching bye now